Hi, this is Fred with Quality One Engravers. I'm going to show you some simple steps in order to do a logo. I've got Photoshop open and I've also got Casmate open. So in Photoshop, File, Open. And I have on my hard drive, on my C drive, I've got a One Logos directory. And then uh, this logo that I just made, I made a directory that was called Gulf Coast Educators Federal Credit Union and this is the logo that was sent to me and it's a CMYK logo so I know that's a problem because I need to convert it to grayscale so you can just go under image mode down to grayscale and say OK and then image image size and I just want to see what the size of this logo is it's 1.3 by almost 5 inches and it's uh, 300 resolution uh, for Casmate, I don't like it anything more than 300. Um, this is about the right size for a 300 DPI logo. Uh, if this were a little bigger, it would be a little bit better, but this should be pretty good. So I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to go Save As. And I've already done this, so I'm going to just resave right over the top. And always have your quality at maximum. And then you can close this out. You don't even really need it anymore. And I'm going to go File, New. So I've got a new Casmate. And I'm going to go Bitmap, Insert. And I go to my One Logos. And I'm going to touch the letter G, get down to the Gulf. And this is the one that was sent to me. And this is the one that I created. And then this brings up this second row of tools, which are for your Bitmap. Uh, this one's for color vectorization, but this is gr the one which is poor on Casmate. And this is the one for grayscale, which is extremely good. So I'm going to click on that one. Always just use enhanced curves and just click on vectorize and let it do its thing. And basically behind here, this is the bitmap, and then this is the, the vectorized output. Now, because this logo is not very busy, in other words, there's not lines that go behind each other, it's all straight text, I can figure out what the logo is supposed to be. So I'm going to just go ahead and delete it. Now I'm going to select it all, and I'm going to go under miscellaneous, and sort group, and I am going to click on this, which I can hit F9, but F9 and F10 will mess me up for this recording so I'm gonna click here normally I hit F9 to see this just to see that everything is sorted properly the centers of the R and the A and and the D and the O's are all white where they're supposed to be and then I'm also gonna uh, turn on under miscellaneous there is uh, it's the F10 key I'm not sure where that's at. It's under miscellaneous uh, palette preferences. Uh, anyways, uh, it's on my com computer. It's Alt C, so I can see my control points. If you hit F10, that's where that menu is. Uh, but I can't hit F10 because that's going to quit me out of this recording. So I can kind of look around here and see how well it did as far as its vectorization and I can see it did did pretty well. So now I uh, if the customer is good with this just as an outline the other thing that I'm going to do is I have a hot key I can turn on my control points but I can also turn on um, my contour order so and then I have also have a hotkey Alt S so that I can change where the start point is and I like picking my start point to be a little bit different than maybe what the computer has picked so I'm going to kind of go through here and pick what I think is the best spot for my start and end points so in other words why not this start near each other or this one start right here that way the cutter travels the least and you wouldn't want this starting in the middle it's much better to start at a corner and obviously even far better if it starts near the top and on an internal corner you'll see it the point and then that 
one looks okay there and this one here for the A and here you can see a lot of this will will continue to repeat I'm doing the basically the same thing on all of these okay and then I'm gonna arrow back and do the same thing on the F the E the D and the D have it start near each other same thing with the R why have it race around Again, here and here, 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 down here, and the T looks good. And again, I'm going to race over to do this one down in this corner. And it's obviously objective uh, w where you want those start points to be. And then look at it, okay? Now, one of the other things I wanted to do is I want this to engrave first, or I want this to be first, second, third, and then fourth through whatever it happens to be, and then finally the last line. So what I'm going to do is I have uh, in my toolbar here is I want to sort into out and left to right, and I say OK. So it's going to do this one, one, two, three. That should be OK. But you can see it does four, six, seven. 11 10 12 so it's bouncing around between these two so I've learned that I can I've set up a hotkey that's control X to cut from the drawing and then control V and I know that anything that you cut and paste goes to the end so I'm gonna grab this one control X and control V so I know I have it sorted left to right so now it's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fifteen through 26 then it goes back and reads this way uh, if I wanted to do it expediently maybe I could have it engraving right to left here but most people like to see their engraving reading as they would read it so I usually go to the end and then start over so 27 28 and then 50 is the last number so now this is a, a logo ready to send to my customer if all they want is an outline now typically that's not going to be the case so I'm going to hit F6 to zoom out I have it selected and I'm going to just copy it above and control pound and to turn off my uh, contour order and then F7 to zoom in to see it all okay so this concludes this portion of it if you can get this far uh, the next portion is going to be some cleanup and then also some filling and now I'm going to hit the F10. So.